It's exactly 19 minutes past 8, and you're right on time for youth and politics. My name is Garanja Alex, and of course, you can interact with us on all our social media platforms at Y254 channel. Of course, you can hit us on our Twitter handle, and of course, at Facebook at Y254. Today, I'm not alone. Of course, I'm joined by a panelist of three guests. And of course, I want to introduce them, of course, from right from my right. It's Daniel Oronga, political analyst. I believe that right now we are conversant with him. He was here last week. Thank you. Karibu sana. Asante. Of course, we have next to him is our Honorable Joshua Mbithi, Masinga constituency. Karibu sana. Thank you so much. And of course, right from him, it's Alex Mayore, uh, Youth Coordinator, Third Way Alliance Party, Nairobi County. Yeah, thank you for hosting me. It's a pleasure to be here. Nice to have you people, and it's great. Mm -hmm. I want us to begin with the issue of corruption in the country. Over the last two years, Kenya has lost over 30 billion shillings to corruption deals in Kenya. Just to mention, but just a few, the National Series and Produce Board reported to have lost 1 billion, 900 million shillings. Kenya Pipeline Company lost 2 billion shillings, rather. Kenya Power, 470 million shillings. Just, these are just, just like a tip mm -hmm. in the ocean, mm -hmm. tip of water in the ocean. There's still more that we can call, call on a roll. What do you think about the issue of corruption? Are we really able to fight corruption, Daniel? Well, um, Thanks again. Uh, this is my honest opinion about it. Uh, you really see that Jubilee uh, government is, uh, you know, the first time of Jubilee, um, you realize that there was push and pull. Uh, when, um, by then, the court coalition by that time would, would, you know, pop up figures, you know, pop up scandals. And on the other side, the government would sit at the fence and say, you know, it is not us who have done this. Mm -hmm. But right now, um, after the second term and the subsequent handshake, you could see there is a sustained purge towards uh, fighting the graft and uh, putting people, you know, follow up and accountability. <coughs> that is my honest opinion. Then opposed to when uh, the first time when the president threw his hand on the finger and said, what do you want me to do? This time around, he has been very, you know, uh, upfront in terms of trying to deal with matters corruption and uh, I begin by saying that there is a goodwill, political goodwill as we stand right now to, uh, you know, sustain the fight the part. Now, secondly, like I said before, you see, um, the moment we do not have this word corruption, every platform I say, in, in all our 43 ethnic tribes, mm -hmm. there is how you define a thief, you see, mm -hmm. and there is a punishment for a thief. But in our tribes, there's no word corruption. So that means it's just something there that, it's something there. Whether it's, it's abuse of office, corruption, economic crime, corruption, nepotism, corruption. So, so it's, it becomes difficult actually to define it in, in, the, in the penal court on how the punishment are sustained. When, when, when you mentioned that, I'm prompted to say this, yes, or rather to ask this. When we talk about corruption, it's a general term that means graft, embezzlement of funds. We talk about nepotism and all these words. Group, you see? Yes. Because that is what the case, you see, when, when, when somebody is taken to court, the judge will, 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 we know, they will convict you, but then they will quote a section of economic crime and something. All right. Or fraudulent deals or something. <laughs> all right. But for a thief, you exactly say, this is a thief, and the sentence for a thief is this one. So you, you, you actually see that there is, there is a lacuna in how then do you deal with it. As a country, historically, mm -hmm. it's been difficult. But now coming back, that when we accepted the new constitution, there is the way we also see that there is devolution of corruption. Yes. Our governors right now, that you see, uh, Kiambu governor is now allegedly, I'm saying allegedly, allegedly. because it's, 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 mm -hmm. it's still uh, a matter that is a case in court. Uh, Migori, Sia, everywhere. So there is a de there is a sense in which we devolve corruption, mm. and then we are, the government is struggling to fight it at a national level, and also to follow it at the county. But I believe that the president right now, as he looks, and his demeanor is actually serious in trying to, uh, you know, fight the party. Probably just to, to bring you on board. Do you think the strategies that have been laid ahead of us to fight corruption are really effective? To me, I think they are effective yes. because the president has stood up to be counted. Right. What he has done is that uh, there was no goodwill before because the opposition could run and they say, you are 
you are against us. You have caught one of our own. You are, you, you are against this tribe. You are against this party. You are against the opposition. And everybody wants, wants, a, wants one of the, 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 the corrupted people who are taken to court. You could see the whole community rallying behind him. Say, you our own person. Mutuetu, mutuetu. But now, because there is handshake and there is goodwill in politics, then that we are going to win this war, uh, the war against corruption. There is no need of going to something with a, no, with a negative attitude yes. because it, it, you, you need to be positive all the time. Mm -hmm. So to me, there is goodwill to fight corruption and we are going to win this war because yes. there is goodwill. All right, when you mentioned that, I'm probably to bring in uh, Alex because that Alliance Party is proposing something in your bill, the Punguza Mizigo bill, you're yes. proposing life sentence if someone is convicted. Yeah, yeah, it's true. We are proposing that. Uh, we feel that uh, corruption has been a cancer in this country. And uh, for it to be dealt with, we need to take uh, radical measures to deal with the vice. Um, as it is, we are seeing DCI and DPP uh, doing their work. They are very active. We also feel as a party there is a uh, political goodwill. So that's why we are offering uh, op opinions so that uh, we can work with the government yes. into achieving this goal of uh, ending corruption in Kenya. Do you think in the life sentence will solve anything? Um, it will definitely reduce corruption because uh, we need to make uh, the, the what's the word I'm looking for the benefits of uh -huh. corruption, uh, the consequences of corruption more. Uh, more dangerous yes. than the benefits of corruption. Yes. It will definitely work. We've seen it work in other countries. You seem to be having a different opinion. Uh, yeah, I always have a different opinion by ridiculous proposals by the third realize. And I think. Why do you call it ridiculous? Very ridiculous. You see, let me tell you. Um, you know, we have a sense of natural law that anybody, somebody is uh, innocent until proven guilty. Yes. And there is a due process of the law that to the <coughs> end you must be found to have been committed a, sin, uh, a crime so that you be sentenced. But you see, as, as a country, you cannot, um, we cannot have a radical proposal to you know, commit people to life sentence uh, unless it's a really, really serious crime. Unless we are considering to you know, have corruption of which I agree to some extent becoming a very serious crime against the people of Kenya. Mm -hmm. But then, I think for us to um, have you know, a proposal like, you know, life sentence and all this. Mm -hmm. What, what this v what, what, what <coughs> background are we coming to, you know, from? And understand that this will effectively work. We know very well our political nature. That you see, the mechanization that puts somebody to have a very serious allegation can, can sometimes be, you know, fathered by individuals. Mm -hmm. You can, how many times have people been mentioned? Like uh, Honorable was saying that you can sit on the fence and mention the other guy sit there and try to mechanize so that it could be seen as one who is uh, you know seriously corrupt but then if they would have I would have agreed with them if they could be appointed that would be brought if you are being you know uh, really to the end of it mm -hmm. be found to have been yes. and there is a glaring evidence mm -hmm. pointing towards that then you are convicted of that crime but not I think what they've stated probably just to come back to you, what they have said is they have given a stipulated time of 30 days. From day one, the day you have written a statement down, all the way to the 30th day is the when the jury should give the verdict. But, but, but then you see, that is why you asked me before, mm -hmm. if our judiciary yes. right now is crying foul of lack of resources to expedite these cases, and, and one thing I agree with Tadwe Alliance is the fact that there should be a, a time limit for a mm -hmm. case to be determined. That I agree. Because then what our history is that you are taken to court, yes. you've stolen enough, and before your case ends, you're already a governor. You see? Mm -hmm. Or you're already a leader. Yes. So it, it, within the powers that you hold, you, you find very difficult for a jury to take through your case because you're already a leader. You understand? Mm -hmm. And you already have preview to some resources yes. to fight for your cases. So on, on the time limit, I agree. But on the life senses, I think 
it ought to be conversed so that we really have to arrive in a conclusion about it. Uh, l- let me bring in my I have a simple question for you. Being a leader and you're taken to the court, do you think that affects the verdict? It doesn't affect the verdict. If 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 all the if all the loose hands are yes. tied, mm-hmm. investigations are done properly. Then, uh, if you are convicted, you are convicted. It doesn't mean you are. It doesn't uh, separate a leader mm-hmm. from the, the 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 normal person because a person is a person. Leadership does not qualify you uh-huh. to be corrupt, mm-hmm. to do the wrong things. Okay. Yeah. So to me, it it it, 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 it doesn't change. The only thing that I the only thing that I am I'm not for the the third way alliance yes. is that that is too ambitious. That is too ambitious a proposal <laughs> that uh, that uh, people be convicted for life for for corruption. Okay. While others have murdered other people mm-hmm. and they are still not in life sentence. So to me that is uh, is not here or there. It's uh, just a proposal which I, I think to me it cannot see the light of the day. What's your take on that? Ma, 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 you know, just before I come to you. You, you okay. see, uh, we, are, we are being ideal but not realistic to the politics of this country. We have had people who have been had case, court cases, serious cases before. But these people, before their cases were determined, they either found their way as members of county assembly, yes. members of parliament, or mm-hmm. to some extent senators or governor. And you realize, that, and I agree with what you say, that you see, the privilege you have yes. when you're a leader and the resources you have, mm-hmm. you could one way or the other interfere with your cases. And this is the reality about the Kenyan politics for me. <coughs> Um, before you before you respond, I know you have a response for it. Yes, You're yes. prompting me to say something that the court gave us a verdict for Honorable C. S. Rotich for treasury, and the, the court said he should not step into the treasury unless he's accompanied by detectives. So how can he interfere? And and even right now he's not even supposed to leave the country. You saw the determination, and I also like to add to what you said. You see, Mo- Lady Justice Mubigugi also had mm-hmm. a ruling, yes. and said that once you are, uh, you know, you have a court case to answer, you should not uh, go to your offices because then it will be considered a crime scene. Mm-hmm. You understand, mm-hmm. and therefore the deputies should take over. So, <coughs> what I am saying, and by the way, Roti has got a future, and I said this in the morning before. You know, the, the future that he has is that he, he will run for a governor and get it. <laughs> on a silver platter. Because the history of this country, you know, if we had people who were suspected of, you know, uh, bringing a National Youth Service down, and they are governors, they are, they, are, they, are, they are in government, and there are all these kind of issues, what prevents him in other times? Yes. But then what I am saying is the fact that, you see, we, and I support, we are actually seeing a government mm-hmm. that right now is so firm about and sustains, you're always sustaining the fight against corruption. And, and, and I think when you go toward that direction, one of the things I would also like to, the, to, to give the government opinion is that not only should they step aside, but people should be taken to prison and the property should be forfeited and brought back to the country. That is, that is it. As that we announced, before, before we go to the story of uh, the Kambu Governor Fenno Tito's arrest yesterday, yeah. let me ask you something. Uh, as that we alliance party, yeah. what are your ways, or rather the procedure that you have set ahead for someone's arrest, determination of the case, and the verdict given? Uh, as that we alliance, what we are saying is, uh, uh, first let me respond to Daniel. Uh, we, we, we were proposing that uh, uh, idea of um, jailing uh, these people for life sentence after they have been confirmed by the court to be corrupt, not when there are allegations. So after the DC has done all their work and uh, presented the case in the court and said that this person is corrupt, mm-hmm. we say now you can um, jail this person. Yes. You see, it works, it works uh, like he has said, CSO mm-hmm. teach uh, has a bright future, which I agree, he might run and uh, he might win. Yes, yes. But once we have these people jailed, uh, mm-hmm. it prevents that. It, it, it prevents that opportunity for them. All right. And then another thing we want to add is uh, the asset and uh, recovery authority. Uh, they need to work better so that they can freeze their resources. Right. Uh, these people work corrupt so that they are not able to influence the the cases, mm-hmm. even if uh, they uh, they are out of uh, like right. Rotich right now. Yes, it's the clip that you're seeing on the screens. It's Kambu Governor Fenway Tito and his wife Susan Dongo. 
they actually yesterday submitted themselves to the Ethics and Anti-Corruption Commission. They are actually they were arrested yesterday by the Ethics and Anti-Corruption Commission. The two presented themselves at the Commission Integrity Centre headquarters yesterday after two days on the run. Where Tito's lawyer, Oliver Kipchumba, say they will remain in the hands of the detectives until they are presented to court today. So we are still following on this story. They'll be arraigned in court this morning, though still more are still actually being sought after. We have several who have been arrested. This has become now the norm. People being arrested, but Kenyans are uh, allegedly saying that there are no verdicts given. Mm -hmm. What's your take? Well, uh, you see, again, we are, as a panel, we are agreeing that, you see, our, our, our history is the fact that somebody is taken to, you know, court and receives antipatory orders, obeying, and walks out and, you see, um, we are in a nation of contradiction. Mm -hmm. A chicken thief is merely, you know, sentenced immediately. Mm -hmm. You know, that one doesn't take anything immediately. Nanambia utakok funzo Nanambia, you will be as, uh, an example, serve as an example. But a thief who's brought almost, somebody suspected of, you know, billions and billions, that is enough to bring the whole economy down. Yes. You know, he's just given anticipatory orders, next moment is out of court, and, you know, mentions and... The court just disappears. So for me, mm -hmm. that is why I, I begin to say the, the, the point Kenyans are very clever citizens as we speak because then they know the order mm -hmm. of how uh, somebody would face justice. Mm -hmm. Arrest, take to court, yes. hear the case, determine immediately so that this person whether is innocent or not. Mm -hmm. But then the most interesting bit is, you see, for governors, it is important for you to honor the office, mm -hmm. give dignity to the office that you serve. What do you do? You requested that once you allegedly mention a corruption case, the most honorable thing to do is just to step, step aside. aside. Mm -hmm. You step aside so that investigation proceeds. If you are found, you know, innocent, I mean, it's important. You can resume your office with the dignity <laughs> yes. that it deserves. Other than sticking in the office and say, I would rather die mm -hmm. than resign. By the end of the day, the case is on you. You found culpable and, you know, and then it proceeds and proceeds. But then, it goes back to what we discussed always and always. The chapter on integrity and ethics, yes. the article at Conseil on the national values and the practice of good governance in this country. When we threw that out of the window, then electorates are beginning to wonder, how then would we settle for leaders like this? The problem is the electorates of this country. How would you expect to receive bribes during campaign, but then hope that that person will be a good candidate? Uh, because Mayesh is uh, he, he's the best to answer this question. Uh, he has mentioned something about bribing people so as to gain the positions. Do you think that's quite an issue that is bringing all the way up to the billions of money that we've lost as a country? Uh, you, you, you see, you have, to, you have to look for a way of winning. Nobody goes to politics being negative. You have to be positive that you are going to get the seat that you are looking for. Yes. So people will try to please the electorates. Mm -hmm. The voters, okay, must be pleased so that they can be able to vote for you. So, but we are not saying that once you have been voted, you go there and start practicing corruption. No, that is not the way. The corrupt people are always corrupt. If you have never practiced corruption, if you are faithful in small things, the Bible says you will be faithful in big things. If you are a good person when you are a manager of a deep in your, in your village cattle or cattle deep in your village, and then you are now given as a member of parliament, you will be able to take care of the CDF. You will not be able to steal. When you are elevated to be a governor, and the billions are at your disposal. You will still be faithful. But you see, people, uh, people are used to, to capitalizing on the loose ends. Mm -hmm. The systems in the, in, in the counties, the first term, we are very loose. There were no systems. So people could steal any hourly. The second term is a bit better now. 
but still people are still finding a way of getting some loot. So what we are saying is that the government should tighten all those loosens so there is nothing to touch as a governor. Mm -hmm. Nothing for you. You yes. only become, because you are not the IE order. Mm -hmm. There is the, your PSAs, the, the, your ministers, and mm -hmm. what, have, what mm -hmm. have you. So money should not come next to the, near the governor.